How's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. I have to say thank you to the person that wrote into Facebook last night to give us the subject for today. He wanted to know, does the piece of metal being the ashtray bridge on a Telecaster being very close around the pickup have a difference, make a difference in any way? And in a related question, if you have like humbuckers and other pickups that have um, metal and stuff around them, does the material that it's made of make a difference in the tone? That has to do with something called eddy currents. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned. Alright, so let's talk about eddy currents and what they are and how they happen. Don't mind this crazy amount of math up here. We're going to get to that in a second. But first of all, let's talk about briefly uh, the direct question. So, um, this is our Telecaster pickup. We have our, our phenolic base plate, you know, the actual black part. And then we have the metal plate that goes underneath it. And let's draw in here for reference. Let's say this is the metal of the bridge, okay? Does that have anything to do with the tone in the guitar? Well, <clears throat> something happens. Uh, when you have a piece of metal, is this is according to a, a law called Lentz's Law, L-E-N-T-Z, and what it says is that when you have a piece of metal that is perpendicular, so just like this is, to the magnetic field in the guitar, so we have, let's say we have south up and we have north down, and this is perpendicular to the magnetic field and the magnetic field especially on a telecaster is pretty wide because of that that steel base plate okay so it kind of goes something like this it actually probably blooms out a little bit more than that and it's possible that the edges of those bri that bridge in fact it is probable that the edges of that bridge are within that magnetic field as well as that piece of plate on the bottom so your brain would tell you that well, let's talk about what an eddy current is first. Anytime there's a, a metal that's perpendicular, a conductive material that's perpendicular to the magnet, it has this, it induces actually a current within itself called an eddy current, okay? And what happens is this eddy current, they're actually, eddy means a, a spiral of current. So basically that's, that's an eddy current. It happens in water too. So this current is happening in the base plate at all times underneath here okay and what can happen if there is imperfections in the base plate is that it can actually cause uh, little kind of jumps of that eddy current up into you know where the coil is so let's say the coil is right here it could actually cause little jumps up into that magnetic field and it could also cause little jumps up into the coil and it could kind of mess with the efficiency, uh, the electromotive force of the electrons moving back and forth, okay? Now in an electric motor or a generator where you have a rotor flying around, it'll actually, uh, in, a, in our case, the rotor would be where the string is, and if it was flying around past that string, uh, that could actually slow it down. But since we're doing something different here, what we're worried about is the efficiency of the coil itself. So, it could theoretically mess with the efficiency of the coil, and any time we mess with the efficiency of the coil, that affects the tone of the guitar. It just does, okay? Now, it could also happen that we would have these little eddy currents right here on the edges of our plate, and they could disturb the magnetic field of the pickup. Now, this is where the scary amount of math comes in. This is all, this is all mathematically viable. But there are a few things about pickup construction that we need to understand and the actual mathematical probability of this happening to the point that we can hear it. And I'm not going to say one way or another, but I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so I'm going to explain to you briefly this 
uh, formula. P means power. So basically, this is the power that is lost by the particular eddy current. And all these letters up here represent a few different things. They represent the strength of the magnetic field. They represent the diameter of the wire. They represent the thickness of the metal down here. They represent the distance of the metal to uh, between here and here. Um, you know, between this one and this one, or between this one and this one. And all those things factor in. Now, the interesting part about this formula is that basically in a guitar pickup, it does not apply. Because that is only in a static situation when you have a constant voltage, a constant magnetic field, everything is constant. In a, in a guitar pickup, we do not have any of those constants. The magnetic field uh, is a constant, but the inductance within the magnetic field is always changing because of how the string is moving. So the minute that happens, this all kind of, the effect of it, the overall effect of it sort of starts to fall off. This frequency over, this calculation over here has to do with the permeability of these magnetic currents that we're talking about, okay? Now, there's something very, very key to this. We're gonna draw another Telecaster pickup and we're gonna blow it up a little bit bigger. The base plate on a Telecaster pickup is typically, well, the ones I use are 90 thousandths thick, okay? Then there is, I mean, it sits flat against it, but there is also a piece of tape on the bottom of the magnet right here. And because of how things are, it's not like it's a completely machined surface. So we're going to say that there is just a tiny, tiny air gap between there. I mean, it sits flat against it for all practical purposes, but there is a little bit of an air gap between there. This material is not very thick, okay? The material, the actual copper plate or the steel base plate that is used on here is not very thick. This formula up here says that when the steel base plate is very, 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 very close to the magnet itself, that it will produce eddy currents, but the further you move it away from it, uh, there is a point that it gets past, which is a lot closer than this, where the effect of those eddy currents completely falls off. Like it, it like falls off. So, based on that fact, I'm not saying that there are no eddy currents present here, but because of proportionately how many millivolts we're dealing with and how low of a current all this stuff is, and how low of an AC voltage all this stuff is, and how big, believe it or not, how big this gap is between this metal piece and the bottom of the pickup. The overall effect and what you can actually hear, um, that's, there's a question, okay? Uh, because it's not only in a Telecaster pickup or in the bridge itself, because remember that the bridge is actually, I mean, the bridge is like a half inch away from it. So, and there's an actual air gap there. I mean, this is a big gap. Does it affect the magnetic field? Yeah, but the thing is it's constant and it's not moving. So it's not variably messing with the voltage that's in the pickup. It's actually just sitting there, okay? So it's not, um, because an eddy current comes from a lot of motion and there, this, it doesn't move and it's so far away uh, so, and then the other thing, and before we get into what I was about to say, so now we have two coils, and we have a cover on a humbucker, and we have a magnet here, and we have our slug and our screw side, and we have, from China, a brass base plate, and from, in a really good quality pickup, we have a nickel bottom base plate. Does that make a difference? There will people be people that will tell you it absolutely makes a difference, and there will be people that tell you that it absolutely makes a difference what the top cover is made of. I will say that the eddy currents in this do exist, right? They obviously do because it's science. They do exist, okay? Now, we do have a magnetic field, and here's the interesting part about it is, for, a, for the sake of a humbucker, 
Remember we talked about it has to be perpendicular to the magnetic field, but here's something interesting. Let's say this is south and this is north. So then that makes this north, but that makes this also north, and that makes this south, and that makes this also south. So the polarities in a humbucker are kind of screwed up to be able to produce any major amount of eddy currents because when you run your polarity checker around, it flip-flops as it goes around this thing. So at any point, we don't really have a humongous surface that is um, causing a bunch of eddy currents because the perpendicular nature that it has to be to produce is just, it's just not there. Now it is a little bit on the top because it kind of splits it in half. So half of your humbucker is north up here and half of it's south over here. So that means that this top surface of this humbucker could produce eddy currents coming back down into it. But you got to remember, like we talked about before, when you put a cover on a humbucker, there's always a little gap in there. Exponentially, based on this formula right here, that really reduces the amount of eddy currents that can happen because there's an actual gap in there. Now that being said, at Dillon Pickups, one of the things, one of the reasons I use the materials that I use, I put carbon fiber in here a lot of times, and we put a couple other materials in there that are non-conductive. And if there are any eddy currents left in there, then we put this material in there, you know, it's like a 0.3 of a millimeter thick, but it doesn't take much because of this math right here to get rid of those eddy currents. And that's one of the reasons why we do it. So after discussing all of this, and knowing that we have this formula over here that says that if there's any kind of distance between the metal plane that's perpendicular to a, a magnet and we have distance here to here on a humbucker and here to here on a humbucker and here to here on a single coil uh, for a telecaster and from here to here for a bridge we know those eddy currents do exist uh, but can we really hear the difference? Uh, some people say you can. Uh, some people say you can't. The only way to really know uh, for sure would be able to take the only way you could do this that I can think of would be able to take a string, put it over a pickup. Actually, that's probably have to do with a humbucker. Put it over a humbucker, induce it to a particular frequency that was a constant. Look at the results on a scope change the base plate material, do it again, and see if the millivolts and the shape of the wave was different. So many constants would have to be looked at to be able to tell if that was different, but I'm not sure that you'd be able to tell the difference between it when you're hearing it by ear. So, yes, it all exists, yes, it is there. In practical terms, can most guys who play guitar on a daily basis hear the difference? that will always remain to be an unknown. I'm glad you stopped by to Dylan Pickup's blog today. Please definitely ask us more crazy questions like this. I had to think about calculus before coffee this morning, but it was really, really fun, and I hope you all stop by next time. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow.